forgiveness is a major issue in a lot of people's lives. And I think anytime you have a divorce, people separate, somebody won't forgive somebody. And it all boils down to a willingness to be able to say, you know, I forgive you. So one day I was just praying and thinking about something I was going to preach, just like the Lord said to me, you have unforgiveness in your heart. I thought, well, we're toward whom? Because in my circle at that point, I didn't have any. And he pointed me back to my stepfather. So I went to see him. My wife and I went to see him and my mother. And um, uh, we sat down and I said to him, I said, John, I said, I, I want to ask you to, to forgive me for something. And immediately he said, oh, you don't need to ask me to forgive you. I, I said, yes, I need to ask you to forgive me. And I told him, I never accused him of what he did. I never mentioned anything that he did. I just said, I need to ask you to forgive me for holding an unforgiving spirit toward you. Now, if I had said, because you did this and this and this, that would have canceled it out. Because if you're going to ask for forgiveness, you don't name the problem. Um, I can still remember that uh, he got up, came around the table and hugged me and asked me to forgive him for all of it that he had done. And um, that was a very emotional moment for me. And God set me free of it that day. And I knew that if I could forgive him for hurting the most precious person in my life, I could forgive him. Our producer, Bill Bray, was reflecting on the fact that the Bible has a scarcity of adjectives. If you want flowery, you can go to the Song of Solomon. But when the Apostle Peter refers to the promises of God in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, it's the exceeding great and precious promises. Another translation refers to his precious and magnificent promises. When we build our life on Jesus, the Lord of promises, we can have great expectations and hope that is eternal. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins, Jesus said. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words and slander, as well as all types of malicious behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Writing to the Corinthian believers, Paul is even more emphatic about the importance of forgiveness and restoration with the help and authority of Christ, so that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are very familiar with his evil schemes. Deceive, divide, destroy. That's the devil's agenda, according to Charles Stanley. Think about it. On his broadcast last Sunday, he said that when we forgive, we don't always forget. But when we remember those offenses, the things that wounded us, we discover the pain is gone. God has healed our heart. Linda's letter is a wonderful example of this. She sent a big thank you for your interview with Dr. Stanley. God talked to me and through that interview answered my prayer directly. I never had a dad and was abused by my stepfather. My real dad was killed by a drunk driver in 1961. I can feel the love of my father in heaven. He wants me to let go and let him. He is good. I can trust him. He really loves even me. He is my father. Dr. Stanley knows the secret to living life at its best. Obey God and leave all the consequences to him. Are you ready to declutter your heart? It's spring, the season of new beginnings. What a great time to make a fresh start. We'd love to pray with you inviting God to cleanse your heart of all that is robbing you of his blessing. He'll replace it with his love and fill you with hope worth celebrating. God bless you today.